All right, for the second half, I'll start with showing you guys how to do one specific question. You guys need to redo this one after my explanation and then continue with another one, okay? So this question is different. The first time you see it, I get confused. Like, what am I doing here? Okay, here's a question. Question six, there are three variables, not two. You know how normally it's like X and Y, right? This is not X, Y, and Z. Uh, x, Y, and Z. So then you have two equations. One of them has Z in it. So what do we do with this one? Have you guys seen one of these before? Suleiman? No? Emily? No? It's new, right? Three variables. So what do we do with this? Now, the first question. If X is between 2 and 5, find the possible values of Y. So this one is linked to the first equation here. X plus Y must be 30. So if X is between 2 and 5, what do you think is the maximum value of Y? The maximum. And they add up to 30. So what's the maximum Y? Uh -huh. Twenty-five? Um no, higher. Oh wait. Twenty um twenty eight? Yep. Right? Because they must add up to thirty. So when X is the lowest, that's when Y will be the highest. Right? So then the minimum of y would be when x equals to 5. So then y would be 30 minus 5, 30 minus 5, which is 25. Therefore, you would write y is belonging to the domain of from 25 to 28. Right? Because when x is 2, y is 28. When x is 5, y is 25. So y must be between these two values. Okay, now question B. Find the absolute maximum and absolute minimum of Z. <laughs> okay. It's no longer X and Y, it's now Z. So what do you what do you do with this? How do you so start with Z equals to X times Y? How do we uh, find the absolute max absolute minimum? Remember there are two ideas. You find the start point, the end point, and then the second one is the stationary points, right? But how do we find the start and end point? Where does it start? Where does it end? <laughs> now, the idea is this. If you see Z in terms of two variables, you need to get rid of this. Right? So you need to think about get rid of, uh, of this. Okay? How do we get rid of Y? How do we turn that into X in another, in another case? Did you just rearrange the um, first equation? Yes, you rearrange the first equation. So given equation 1, x plus y equals to 30, so you make y the subject, y equals to 30 minus x. Then you take this, you substitute into that y there. Therefore, z must be um, x times by 30 minus x. Okay, now there's no more y. So is there a start point and end point? Yes, the start x is 2 and end x is 5. All right, that's now the start point and end point. And how do we find the turning points? Well, we just derive it. So the steps are the same at this point. The variables that look a little bit different. So first I'll split into start and end. Start and end, and then stationary points on this side here. So start and end at, so first I will sub the start point of x, which is x equals to, is it two, right? I think two, right? So then z would be two times 30 minus 2, which is 2 times uh, 28, which is 56. And then I sub the end point, sub x equals to 5. So then z would be two time, oh, sorry, 5 times 30 minus 5, which is 25 times 5, that's 125, right? So these are the start and end points, okay? So start at 256 and at 5, 125, okay? Now, stationary points, you need to find dz over dx. Alright, that's a, that's a tricky part here. You need to know the notation. dz, so differentiate z with respect to x. Because right, z is the main variable here. It's normally dy over dx, but this is z. And that would just be differentiate. Now, in order to do it, I need to have a different version. Right? I need to expand that minus x squared here. So use the other version. So it'll be 30 minus 2x. Okay, set that equals to 0, 30 minus 2x, so then 2x equals 30, x equals 15. Uh -huh. Aha, what, what does that mean here when x is equals to 15? 
Is this part of the domain? No, right? Because the domain is from two, from two to five. Now uh, that's why when x equals to fifteen, this will be rejected, right? Um, reject or ignored, more like not rejected. So this will be ignored as x must be within two and five only. Right, fifteen is too high. So that means that the domain ends before the turning point, right? And uh, because there's no turning point, then the absolute max will be, uh, sorry, absolute max will be this, and absolute mean will just be that. Does that make sense? Because there's no turning point, so you don't need to consider anything else. Uh, so therefore, absolute max and absolute mean, conclude, done. Is 56 and absolute max is 1, 2, 5. That's it. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah? So, quick recap. To do this question, first, the question uh, question A is a bit strange. You've got to think about, you've got to use the relation, uh, the function that has x and y in it, which is that one here. Okay, and then you reason out <coughs> uh, to find out the domain of y. But you actually don't use the result for A to find B at all. You actually don't need that. Okay, now to do find B, the main idea is to uh, need to turn the y into x. And then you substitute into the main z equation, so you only have z and x. Then you can just do the rest as per normal. Okay? All right, any question? No, Emily? All good? Then now you guys go and redo question six. Okay, after question six, I want to show you guys one more question because I have a feeling that you probably forgot how to do this one already. So let this be a reminder. All right, solving trigonometry equations. Sine cos, do you guys remember how to do it? Yeah, what's the first thing? Suleiman, what's the first thing you know to solve this? Um, I mean, ignore the whole absolute maximum and minimum. Uh, if you see that, what do you think of? What's the, the first idea? And that and that, what do you think of? Start and end points, yeah, 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 yeah. Start and end points, yeah. Okay, well, actually, maybe I'll, I'll continue. To, uh, I'll start the question first and I'll show you guys at which point. It starts getting a bit trippy. So first, you go start and end points, yes. Uh, so go that. So start and end points. Okay, so f at negative pi on 2 is sine of 2 times that, which is negative pi. What is sine negative pi? What is sine of negative pi? Isn't it just uh, 0? 0, very good. It is 0. Because negative pi is this point here, right? On the sine axis, the coordinate is 0. Okay? And then f of pi on 8. So uh, we substitute pi on 8 in here. That will be 2 times pi on 8. So it will be pi on 4. What is sine of pi on 4? Emily, you should know this one. Um, like 45 degrees? Yes, it is 45 degrees. So what's the sine value of that? Suleiman, what answer for me? Uh, 1 over root 2. Yes, it is 1 over root 2. Because this is the isosceles triangle. Remember, you were draw drawing that before. Mm. Yeah, 1, 1, square root 2. So this is 45 degrees. Sine is opposite over uh, hypotenuse. 1 over square root 2. Okay? Yeah, so both of these is pi on 4. It is also pi on 4. So yeah, so that's a start and end point. We'll box them up. We'll keep them in mind. Now the state, the stationary points, is when it gets a little bit challenging. So f dash of x would be derived sine two x. Emily, what's the answer? Um, cos two cos two x. Okay, very good, very good. Two cos two x. The chain rule should be very good by now. And then we solve it. Uh, find the stationary point by setting it equals to zero. Okay, so cos 2x equals to 0, uh, I'll divide both sides by 2, so I'll write cos here, 2x equals to 0. This is solving trigonometric equations. How do we continue? How do we continue? What do we do with the domain? The starting domain is this. Multiply by 
You multiply it by 2. Why? Because we are trying to solve for 2x first, right? So what angle 2x gives you cos equals to 0? Okay, so think. So this is what you think. What angle, right, gives cos of that equals to 0? Okay, because you're finding angle. Yep, yeah, Emily? What, what, what angle would give cos equals to 0? What do you think? Two. Yes, it is power over 2. Very good. Now, we have to convert the domain though because we're solving for 2x. This domain is for x only. So you times it by 2. Uh, you times the domain by 2. You would get the domain for 2x. So that will be from negative pi less than equals 2x less than equals pi on 4. Okay. So that's the domain. Is pi on 2 part of this domain? Is pi on 2 between negative pi and pi on 4? No. In fact, it's higher than pi on 4. So we can't use pi on 2. What else can we use then? What else can we use? What, what other angle? Now remember, the domain is now between negative pi and pi on 4. Okay? If you want to visualize it, here, right? So pi on 4 is this angle here. And negative pi is this one. So the domain will be represented by this section here. Okay? And note that the angle always starts from the positive x-axis, so it goes up to... Oh, sorry, pi on... Yeah, my bad. Pi on 4 is here. 3 pi over 2. Sorry? 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 is more than pi on 4. It's here. Negative pi on 2. Negative pi on 2. Because remember, it goes up to negative pi, which means you have to turn backward. So this one here, or the angle negative pi on 2, would give you cos equals to 0. Right? Because that's the cos axis. Yeah? So, does it make sense to the man? It's negative pi on 2. So that's why it won't be pi on 2, it will be negative pi on 2. Which means that x will be negative pi on 4. Okay? So that would be within the domain, because that's you know, higher than negative pi on 2, right? So the negative pi on 4 is, um, will be the x value, and then you've got to go f of negative pi on 4, okay? And then that would be sine of uh, 2x, so 2 times that would be negative pi on 2. What is sine of negative pi on 2? Negative 1. Negative 1, that's right, because it's the same, it's the same point there. Right? It's a, yeah, it's the same point there, which means that sine of that will just be negative 1 on the sine axis here. Okay, so now we've got this one, which means what? What's the absolute maximum and absolute minimum? Um, 1 over 2 is absolute max. Yep. 1 is absolute max. Yeah. Okay, so this question is a bit tricky because of the solving trick equation on this side here. Uh, any question? No? Redo that one and then do question 12. So 11 and then 12. <coughs> okay, I'll start working through question 12 as well.
Right? That's the answer for question 12. Are you done with 11, Suleiman? Yeah? Uh, Emily, are you done with 11? Okay, I'll just pause, uh, I'll just stop the recording for now.